Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Today we'll be taking a look at Dynacrypt, which is both ransomware and spyware. And to discuss this with us is Karsten Han from GData, who is a Hi. ransomware hunter. <laughs> All right, you broke me off, so you get to complete your introduction. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah, I work at GData, and um, I mainly work on ransomware, but I also do other malware. So um, you also write signatures, right? I write signatures for all kinds of malware. Yeah, the ransomware part is just something I'm interested in, so I got kind of specialized in it. But I have to do every kind of malware. All right, so how did you come across Dynacrypt? I think you were the first guy to discover it. Yeah, um, we use VirusTotal for a lot of these discoveries um, because it's quite uh, frequently used and a large database. So if we, we have some kinds of um, rules, strings we can search for. Ah, uh, I see. Malware and... So you have these kind of rules set up, and whenever like something is found which has some resemblance, you're notified, and then you take a closer yeah. look. Yeah, exactly. Like I could, for instance, I could uh, uh, search for certain keywords like ransomware, Bitcoin, um, powers VSS admin, uh, and I see. Uh, if if these are found, I would get a notification, and then I can take a look at these. Yeah, uh, it's it's great these well, days that you can do this kind of string analysis online directly without having to yeah. actually load up something like IDA Pro. Yeah. So you have a really good indication about the file even before you actually download it. Well, I can't search everything manually. It's just too much. So it's yeah. more like a pre-filter, but I still have to look at it uh, when when I get this notification. So what was the first thing that ticked you off about Dynacrypt? Mm, I think it was interesting how it used PowerShell and that it also steals data. So that was kind of interesting. OK, so you were able to uh, get to the yeah. steal data part uh, directly on VarsTotal? No, no. Okay. I just. Yeah, it was just a strong indicator that I haven't seen this before, and then I ran it on my machine. So let me go ahead and do the same. Run it on a machine, and let's see what yeah. happens. This thing requires admin privileges, which is uh, kind of an indicator. I mean, these days, there are mm -hmm. ransomware files, I think, that can do it without the admin privileges. Yeah, some, some are using... A uh, UAC bypass. Yeah, the file is now in memory. I think we'll see a spike in disk activity very soon. CPU is already going up. Let's see if I can keep Task Manager open too. I guess it's called My App. Mm -hmm. Just deleted itself. And our pictures are already encrypted with a crypt extension. I think this ransomware can be decrypted. Is that right? It probably can be. I don't want to talk about in detail why, um, okay. because that would be a hint to the ransomware authors how they can fix this. So. All right. But it probably can be decrypted, uh, but we will only put work into a decryptor if they are actually victims. Um, mm -hmm. So, so is this ransomware in the wild or is this still in development? I think it is in the wild because there is a release on a hacking site for for this, um, let's say, malware creation toolkit. And this toolkit was used to build this ransomware. And since this is a release, it's probably being used already. What percentage would you say of the ransomware that you see on a daily basis is created with the help of these toolkits by people who may not necessarily know how to create a ransomware from scratch? That's hard to tell. Uh, that depends what you take as a basis. Like I think the biggest players are no toolkits, but they make the most uh, samples in the wild that are successful. Um, and then a very large percentage is the open source ransomware. 
uh, ah, which is like also no tier. toolkit. You know, yeah, hidden tier. Those are no toolkits. Those are just uh, ready to build sources that people modify and then build. I think the open source is bigger than the toolkits. Yeah, I recently um, found a few tweets talking about the whole open source ransomware being a bad idea thing. What's your personal view yeah. on that? Yeah, I, I agree that it's bad. Um, simply because when, when Hidden Tier got successful, we saw an increase in new families, new ransomware families um, based on that source and same happened for other open source ransomers and I think that a lot of people who use that wouldn't even be able to write their own ransomware and they may even not have the money to buy one of those toolkits to create the ransomware and click it. Um, I think that this enables people who would otherwise not be able to, to write ransomware to um, build some and get their foot into this ransomware business. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> that is particularly annoying, especially when you know there are kids who are like 15 year old and they're able to create ransomware and wreak havoc everywhere. Yeah. So looking under it, my it, app, it says like Form 1. So is this like a Windows Form application created in Visual Studio? Yeah, it probably is. OK. Because <laughs> that's pretty much the most common like ransomware programming I've seen out there. A lot of threats like Jigsaw, Venus well, Locker. I think they, they leave the default names in there a lot of the time. You yeah, that's see Windows application one. <laughs> yeah. Let me see if I can locate the actual folder where um, it's going to be saving the files that it'll be sending back to its command and control server. You mean this loot? Yeah, the loot. Uh, <laughs> These guys have uh, gone pirate style. Yeah, it should be in local app data slash din a. Yeah, I just loot. found it. <laughs> mm. It has a subfolder called keylog. So does it like yeah. spy on your keystrokes? Yeah, it does. Wow. And I even noticed uh, something funny in the Bleeping Computer article. It says it even takes voice recordings. So are we being recorded right now? <laughs> <laughs> Could be. <laughs> Well, that'll be uh, that'll be a nice message to send the ransomware developers. <laughs> Next time they'll I probably have more precautions to stop people from running it in VMs. Yeah. What's even more interesting, um, Leaping Computer also says they they delete the files that they steal. So, yeah, it's stealing in the in the right sense of the word. They don't just copy your data, they even delete it. Although, I mean, given that your files are being encrypted anyway, how does that really make a difference? Well, the uh, things, credentials, and those are usually not encrypted. It, like in your browser or in your email client, you might enter your passwords and save them. And um, yeah, those are usually not encrypted by ransomware. It's interesting looking at the um, this toolkit that is what's used to create the ransomware, you, you can see a lot of options like blocking applications like Skype and Chrome and Firefox and Pigeon and Opera. And there are ev there's a section, a section called Evil Extras that will, that says destroy Steam, delete Windows logs. Disable okay. Windows account. So it's yeah, really I, for I people. I did actually notice that when when I reboot the computer, if I reboot the computer yeah. while the ransomware is executing, it says that my user account has been disabled, and I need to contact <laughs> system administrator. So I yeah. tried that once, um, and when I reboot, it just the computer instantly crashes, and then when you try to log back in, you can't do it. So I don't know if there's a workaround for it, but it's really crazy. It's crazy. Also, if they want to pay uh, the, 
if they want to get a payment, why would they block your browsers? So uh, yeah, like they, I guess they, they, would they only make it... do that if you uh, interrupt the encryption process. Mm -hmm. Not sure. So talking about the specific nature of this ransomware and that it is both a ransomware and a spyware, have you seen anything else like this before that spies on your data while encrypting your files? Uh, not really. I have, I mean, there's always, there are always samples where several malware families are combined into one using a binder. So I see this a lot, but that it is one family that does both um, features, ransomware and stealing and spying. I didn't see that before. Okay, so that makes uh, Dyna one of its kind in a way. Um, yeah, I haven't seen this before. Wow, this thing is taking a really long time to do its thing. Yeah, this, it's a sign that the encryption algorithm used is probably very slow. Or yeah, it might not sleeping. be optimized. <laughs> yeah. It's, oh, there we go. It finally popped up. Uh, or sometimes they also sleep, uh, like the the processes sleep uh, a lot, a long time. So yeah, uh, I don't think this one sleeps because the CPU usage was like locked at around sixty five percent. Yeah, then it didn't sleep. Yeah. Yeah, does Locky sleep though? I have seen samples that do this. I'm not sure if it's Locky or if it's the crypto being used. Sometimes the uh, cryptos do this. They yeah. do that to avoid sandbox detection, usually. Ah, uh, I see. Because sandboxes have, like, they have a few seconds or half a minute, and when the time is over, they will break up, like, stop yeah. Uh, yeah, analyzing, and that's like the why automated they do this. sandboxes, like Cuckoo and things like that. Yeah, that. So they just delay the payload delivery for several minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they try to. There are also ways around that being used. Uh, some sandboxes are able to av mm -hmm. avoid the sleep calls. <laughs> All right. So Dynacrypt just finished doing its thing, and now it says that your computer has been locked. If you want to unlock, send $50. That's kind of reasonable, I'd say. <laughs> Given yeah. that some ransomware is really expensive. So Price, I, they, right. they probably know that their encryption algorithm isn't that strong. Is is that the factor? Like, is, is that how they decide how much to charge? No, I don't think so. I think it's rather who, who are the potential victims. So if anyone's a victim of this ransomware, what would you tell them? I would tell them they should contact us. Um, either Vidra or contact uh, me or Demonslay, because Demonslay is often doing the decryptors. Mm -hmm. um, we may be able to create a decryptor for that. All right. By the way, um, the Process Explorer file I had on my desktop just got deleted automatically. Yeah, I think it deletes everything from the desktop. Oh, so it's, it's like a continuous thing running in a loop? I think so, yeah. Oh, I see. I also let me, saw let me that try that happened. out. <laughs> Let's see if we can <laughs> copy a new file and if it gets deleted. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Things are disappearing. So <laughs> this thing likes to uh, just keep deleting your files. So it doesn't really let you use your computer because if you copy anything over, it's just a matter of time before it gets deleted. Yeah. How difficult is it to like actually remove this ransomware? It shouldn't be that difficult. It's not ah. like it's... <laughs> <laughs> but here's some funny things. Um, I just tried opening MS config, and it says the operation has been canceled due to restrictions in effect on this computer. Please contact your system <laughs> administrator. 
So that gives yeah, me an error so message. Yeah, it disables it, yeah. Let me just try rebooting and see what happens. Do you know, even if you're not able to do this uh, while the system is online, the, the operating yeah, system Yeah, you can is go online, to like safe mode or something. Well, even safe mode means it's an online operating system, but you can also do things from, how is it called? Recovery yeah, console? Yeah, you can so use a recovery console, Linux or something like that. Just use a live exactly. CD boot in. That will always work. Um, if you have something mm -hmm. locking the screen or if oh. even if they think of the same <laughs> Wow. <mode. laughs> so what our account has been disabled. It does yeah. not let me, uh, you know, log in even, it, even after it encrypted the files, which is really odd. I mean, if I don't log in, how am I going to pay these guys? Yeah, it doesn't really seem like a logical concept. But then again, I mean, you cannot expect logic from cyber criminals all the time. Well, it depends. The most professional ones are very good at that. So mm -hmm. some uh, of them have like even... Like <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. S most successful ones usually are also very professional in what they are doing. And they even provide better support than uh, a lot of legit <laughs> companies. So, yeah. Um, which is uh, kind so of sad. <laughs> but yeah, it is kind of sad that you can get better support from a ransomware developer than from your AV company sometimes. Sometimes, yes. All right, so I guess that's the end of this virtual machine. I don't think we're getting anywhere without using a bootable solution. Yeah. So it was great to have you around for this short demonstration <laughs> on TPSC. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, I did. It's very interesting here. <laughs> Maybe we'll do this again sometime. So let us know yeah, your thoughts we'll... in the comments, everybody. Um, like and share if you enjoyed this. If you have any questions specifically for Karsten or for me, just write them down in the comments. We'll get to that. This is Leo. Thank you for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.